So let's get started on the Laplace transform. Now we're going to look at the Laplace transform as an extension to the Fourier transform. And in this video, we're going to go through a full graphical example. But initially, we'll start off with the mathematics. So don't get too worried if you're unsure of what this means, because it will become apparent whenever we get through the graphical example. So if we write down the Fourier transform here, so f of i omega is integral from minus infinity to infinity over a function f of t e to the minus i omega t by dt. So we're going from the time domain to the frequency domain. Now, we're going to keep this as is, but we're only going to change one thing. We'll add in an extra term e to the minus sigma t. So you think of this term e to the minus sigma t as modulating this function f of t. And we'll keep the rest of it the same. Now I've left out the, uh, the internal part of this bracket, okay, because we're going to be changing this uh, variable here. So we'll gather like terms and that becomes e to the minus sigma plus i omega. So you can see here, this is a function here of i omega. And now we've got a function here of sigma plus i omega. So we're going to change this here from i omega to sigma plus i omega. Now, we don't see it written like that. Usually, you'll replace the sigma plus i omega with a factor of s. So s is our complex frequency variable. We also note that we've changed the limits of integration. Now, this transform here, we, we tended to be known as the bilateral transform, so from minus infinity to infinity. But we change this to uh, from 0 to infinity, and this is sometimes known as a unilateral transform, although we don't usually use that term, we'll just call it the Laplace transform. Now we can change this to, to 0 to infinity in order to make the whole thing causal, because if we're going from minus infinity, then it wouldn't be causal, we would be having uh, an effect uh, before a, a cause, and we're dealing with real signals here, so we're going to be going from 0 to infinity. So the Fourier, the Laplace transform, f of s is given by the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to minus s t by dt. So that's the equation that we're interested in. Now, we'll go through a full graphical derivation, but in the videos to come as well, we'll go through see another couple of methods of deriving this. So um, you should become quite familiar with what it means and have a good intuition by the end of the course. So let's move on to an example. But just a quick note before we get into the example, we can form the Fourier transform from the Laplace transform by setting the value of sigma to equal to zero. By doing that, you get rid of the sigma term and you're just left with the i omega term. Now another point here is, why bother with the Laplace transform? Why not just uh, use the Fourier transform? Well, the Laplace transform it deals with a wider class of functions than the Fourier transform. You get a lot of fu functions uh, won't converge with the Fourier transform that will converge with the Laplace transforms. So we're talking about the, the integral conversion. Also describes the functions in, in more detail. We'll get to that later on. And also, and probably most importantly, it's a method of solving differential equations. So the idea of differentiation is equivalent to multiplication by our s, our complex frequency variable s, and integration is equivalent to a division by our complex frequency variable s. So again, you'll see that in the videos to come. So let's look at an example now. Now, so you don't get mixed up with all the axes, let's go over what we have just at the moment for the Fourier transform. So we've got a little drawn here of the Fourier transform. So we have a, a function here in the time domain. And our Fourier transform it, and this represents, say, the cos so omega t or the sine omega t or a, a, the complex surface, which we get through in order to get the Fourier transform here. Now, what's happening here is that on the time domain side, we can have a complex function, but of a purely real variable t. So t is just a real variable; it's just time. Okay, but we could have it as a complex function of time, and we've seen that whenever we created the complex exponential. And also, whenever we get into the frequency domain, we've got a complex function of a real value, omega. So omega is a real value, it's just a number. But the, the 
A Fourier transform can be a complex valued function. We can see it's a real, can have a real and also an imaginary part. But the Laplace transform is slightly different. So let's have a wee look and see what happens with the Laplace transform. So in the time domain, the Laplace transform is going to be the same. It's going to be a complex function of a real value of time. But in the frequency domain, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to be a complex function of a complex variable of frequency. Okay, so in the Fourier transform, this would have been a, a complex function of a real variable omega, but it's going to be a, a complex in the frequency domain. So we're going to quickly run out of axes in order to represent this. But we'll see how we do that just in a minute. So the, the full graphical example here, we're going to use the step function. So we're going to find the Laplace transform of this unit step function. Now we've seen this unit step function before. It's u of t equals 1 for all values of t greater than or equal to 0. So it's defined at 1 at the 0 point, And it's equal to 0 for all t less than 0. Now, to work out the Laplace transform, it's really relatively straightforward. We just use our equation. We say the integral from 0 to infinity of our function. Now, it functions u of t times e to minus st by dt. Now, whenever we integrate this here, we just get our value of our 1 upon s, e to minus st, and that's from 0 to infinity. So that if we take the 1 upon s out, so we'll have minus 1 upon s, and as this value here for our t tends to infinity, e to minus st is going to tend towards 0. And also, as the t tends towards 0, we'll have anything raised to the power 0, it's just a value of 1. So we just end up with 0 minus 1. So that's equal to the 2 minuses cancel 1 upon s. So the, the Fourier, the Laplace transform of the unit step u of t is 1 upon s. So let's go and we'll do the whole thing uh, graphically. So we're going to break the Laplace transform down into its constituent parts and then see them graphically, just the same as we did with the Fourier transform. So with the Laplace transform, we have this term here, u of t e to the minus st. Well, that u of t e to the minus st is the same as u of t e to the minus sigma plus i omega t. So that can be written as u of t e to the minus sigma t e to the minus i omega t. So then finally, we can write this as u of t e to the minus sigma t times cos omega t minus i sin omega t. So we're going to split this into the two components here. The u of t e to the minus i sigma t cos omega t and the u of t e to the minus sigma t minus i sin omega t. And this component here is going to be integrated from 0 to infinity and this component here is going to be integrated from 0 to infinity. So this is going to give us a, a real component and an imaginary component. And finally, to get the Fourier transform, we're going to have to find the absolute value of this. Okay, But we'll see that whenever we come to the near or the end of the example. So let's go ahead and we'll look at all of these graphically. So we start off with our function u of t. So this is our u of t here. We have another function which is e to the minus sigma t. So here's a value of e to the minus sigma t here. When we multiply the two together, we get our u of t e to the minus sigma t. So we just cut off the part before the, the, the minus values here. Okay, so we have this term here. So if we look at that in our, lip in our MATLAB. So again, this is it in MATLAB, or u of t e to the minus sigma t and u of t times e to the minus sigma t. Now here's our cos omega t surface. We've seen this before. We'll have our omega along here, our t along here. So this is a, the cos omega t. So there's nothing new in this. Here we see our u of t, e to the minus sigma t, cos omega t. So this is the cos omega t surface. And you can see it's been modulated by this function u of t, e to the minus sigma t. So it just means that as t tends towards infinity, this whole thing just tends towards 0 via this e to the minus sigma t. Now, what we do is we integrate it 
in this direction here, so we integrate it with respect to time. So if we were to look in that direction and add up all the components along each of the lines, then we would get a function here. So this function would be a purely real function. So we'd have omega along this axis, and it would be a real axis here. So this would be the real part of one part of the Laplace transform. Similarly, we've seen the minus i sine omega t surface in the previous uh, slides. And what we're going to do is we're going to modulate that again with the u of t e to the minus sigma t. So this is the modulated surface. So we've got a u of t e to the minus sigma t times minus i sine omega t. And again, it's the sine omega t surface, but it's been modulated by this section here. So we've only got the positive values, and you can see that it tails off as t tends towards infinity, the whole thing tends towards zero. And again, if we integrate it with respect to time, so we're integrating it in this direction, then we'll have another function here, and this will be the purely imaginary function, and this will be the imaginary part of one slice of the Laplace surface. So here's another little graphical representation that summarises what we've done in the last two or three slides. Now, if we were to want to find the Laplace transform of this unit step function, so that's a function u of t, then what we do is we multiply it by e to the minus sigma t. The sigma can be any value, it can be positive or negative. So if we take one particular value for sigma, so let's call it sigma 1. So when we multiply these two together, we get this function u of t e to the minus sigma 1 t. Now we've seen that this here modulates the cos omega t surface and it modulates the minus i sine omega t surface. And then we integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to time. So we're integrating in this direction. So when we integrate in this direction, as I'd mentioned in a previous slide, that the Laplace transform in the frequency domain is a complex function of a complex frequency. So it means that in order to represent this, we can represent the, the complex frequency sigma plus i omega, and we can have the real part of it. And we have the complex frequency sigma plus i omega, and we can have the imaginary part of it. So we're having to split it into two here. So we, whenever we do this integration, so we integrate in this direction, then we get this little curve here. So it's this little function in blue. But that only exists at this one particular value of sigma 1. Okay, so this is sigma axis, and it's only that value is sigma 1. So that gives us the real part of the Laplace transform for that value of sigma 1. Equivalently, integrating in this direction over the sine omega t surface will give you the imaginary part of the Laplace transform but just for that one part, one value of sigma. Now what we do is we combine these, and we combine them into the plot here, which is our frequency, which is our i omega and our sigma, but up this axis here is the magnitude. So it's the magnitude of these signals here. So what we do is we take the real part of this one and square it, the imaginary part of this one is square it and take the square root. So that's the same as we'd seen previously whenever we looked at it, these in terms of a three-dimensional uh, drawing and we're looking for the direction, the, the distance from the central axis out to that point in the three-dimensional uh, uh, drawing that we had done, a three-dimensional uh, complex function. So that's going to give us these heights here. And this is going to give us one particular cut or one particular plane of this Laplace transform. Now, in order to find the rest of the Laplace surface, we have to choose all the different values of sigma 1. So we'd have to have sigma 2, 3, and 4, and sigma minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in doing so, we would gradually build up this full surface. So that gives us a kind of graphical indication of what we're doing with the Laplace transform. So let's go and have a wee look at the 
output for from MATLAB for the Laplace transform of our unit step. So this is the Laplace transform of the unit step. You can see that we've got our sigma here, and we've got our i omega here, and up this axis here is the magnitude f of s. And we can see that from our derivation that our Laplace transform of the unit step is 1 upon s. So you can see here, is this value of sigma and i omega tend towards 0? Then this value here, well, it means that that s is going to tend towards 0. So it's going to tend towards 1 upon 0, which is going to give us an, an infinite value. So it's a little spike centered round about the origin. So that gives an indication or a good graphical representation of an example of a Laplace transform. Now, I'll make the simulations available to you in the resources section so you'll be able to again and recreate what you have here. So you have access to all of these files within the resources section. So we have our L1, which generates our Laplace surface. We're going to have our original time function and we'll have our cost surface modulated by the exponential and the sine surface modulated by the exponential. So let's go and we'll look at each of these. So we have our original time function. So we've seen here they had the original function u of t modulated by one part of the e to the minus sigma t surface. So you get this modulated function of time here. Now we can also again, and we'll have a look at the cos omega d surface, which is modulated by the exponential function. So that's the cos omega t modulated by the exponential surface. And you can see the exponential function. So you can see that the modulation here, okay, and you can also see the modulation before the uh, the values before uh, zero or negative time are a, a value of zero. So we can also have a look at the sine exponential surface. And this gives us our sine exponential surface here. Finally, we use the L1 function here to look at the 1 upon s surface. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at that now. And that's the 1 upon s surface. So you can see we have a pole at the origin. So hopefully that's given you a good indication of what's happening with the Laplace transform in a, a graphical format. And I'll get you on the next video. So thank you for listening and goodbye.